claim and then uh, go beyond. Pete McGuire, CEO of XM Group. Pete, welcome. We are in countdown phase for this critical OPEC meeting. Now, accepting that this could put a short-term bid into play, what really matters, I suppose, is sustainability beyond that. Because you could even have phony production cuts, and that would, of course, conspire, would it not? It's not we never really know for sure. What do you want to see? What does the market demand to see from this meeting? Well, good afternoon, Carson and team. Look, there's no doubt we've seen a dramatic two-week move from 40 back to 35 and now back to 40, all in around about 14 or 15 mm -hmm. trading sessions. Now, the weekend, uh, as far as Doha is concerned, I think Saudis will play a very close hand and they're mindful that they want to keep the production at current levels. So I, I would say that Russia will follow suit. Then you'll see the other countries fall into line. The, the, I suppose the outlier, as we've always said, is going to be what happens with Iran, and naturally they want to increase their numbers. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, a, it's a wait and see process. We've seen very strong movement in the last matter of days with the price of crude, mm -hmm. and certainly where the US dollars traded against the yen are now at about a 17 month low. So, mm -hmm. oh, well, the yen 17 month high. So that just shows and demonstrates the fragility of the market. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs, in a recent note, arguing. Uh, that a freeze at recent production levels will not accelerate the rebalancing of the oil market. Indeed, they're arguing it's more likely to lead to a price drop yep. than a hike. So uh, let's just remind ourselves, you look at the, uh, um, the OPEC uh, tally sheet, we're at all-time production output highs, are we not? You, exactly. You need to really move off that. Well, exactly right. And there, there's some forecasters, Carson, saying that you're going to see out to 2020 until you see a rebalancing. Put our mind out a little bit further, out to about 2030, 2035. Consumption will be around that 108 million barrel mark, and then you've got the demand. So if you've got the demand sitting there and you've got the production, mm -hmm. then it's, it's a long-term range from where we're currently sitting at 94 million barrels a day. So there's plenty of growth left in the market. We've got 2 million barrels extra production a day. And that's always the, uh, you know, the, the major mm. concern as well, far as price. You can blame Iran for 4.55 million barrels a day in March alone. So it's actually been ramping it up yeah. even before the meeting. It's been basically scurrying to get it. It's not going to change. It's yeah. not like they're going to say, OK, as, even if they sit in the meeting, we might hold back. I think they might say, whoops, we, we didn't. Mm. I mean, I can't, you've been in, in uh, isolation for such a long time. Exactly right. That's the situation, and, and they naturally want to boost their balance sheet like the other countries. And you, you're calling out 2020 for that, that equilibrium. Steve Johnson, that is a, a, a you know, line in the sand date then, is it not? And what do you do in the meantime? Say you've got a clutch of, of or at least a couple of select energy, domestic energy uh, producers on your, in your portfolio. What, what's your it's call always that? dangerous, I think, to start trying to call these things too early but I, I think there has been some evidence over the past week of a market that people the the price is obviously very forward-looking people starting to look out a year and seeing a very different supply demand dynamic than we're seeing at the moment now for me the really big difference in oil compared to almost all other commodities is you lose without spending money you lose five or six million barrels of oil worth of production every year because mm -hmm. the fields decline they produce less if you don't put more money in you get less oil out and we've seen across the whole industry dramatic dramatic cuts in capex so yes, people can pump more in the short term, and yes, that's a logical reaction to lower prices because they need to pay the bills and keep the lights on in most of these countries. I still think that two, three years down the track, you're a, a very big chance here of a shortage and a fairly meaningful one if people don't start spending money soon. Okay. Uh, Peter, perspective on that? Well, that could be well the case, and I agree to some extent as far as Steve's uh, and his thoughts on that. Uh, you know, the other side, of course, is that with... Uh, you look at the rushes, you look at what's happening with the Saudis, and of course the US, the, uh, as the price increases, I'm sure you're going to see all of those players put a, a, a larger number as far as barrels out per day, and certainly the oil rigs and, and what the shale revolution's doing in the States, all those guys are going to be very, very, uh, you know, concentrated on, you know, re-entering a market. So mm -hmm. I think like the shipping industry, like many other of the commodity sectors, there's just too much or too many producers. And that seems to be the greatest issue at the moment. You've got too many players producing too much.
Um, the Baker Hughes oil rig is at 354, <laughs> down from 1600 and change. Mark, I love your numbers. No. I mean, every week you, you, you um, went, he's, it he's always goes south. Yeah. yeah, they're always going south. You can probably find the people now. You can name the people. Eventually, you'll get names on the actual rigs. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it is really extraordinary. And that's, that's way back below where it was. Well, let me oh, say okay. something on that, Mark. Yeah. If we, and hopefully we're still here in a couple of months' time, and we look at those numbers, and if we don't see a change as far as Mother Nature and hurricanes within the region as far as the Gulf, and nothing changes, I reckon you're going to have a two-handle in front of that number. Wow. I mean, it's mm. just think about it, the US economy, the job losses that you'll see in Texas, Oklahoma. I mean, maybe now it'll start to peter out because so many people have left, but I mean, th that is going to have a serious social consequence around those people. And then they try to get them back on. So to your point, mm. maybe they won't do that. I, I feel that when they want to turn it on, it'll turn on. But it is, it is a cleansing of America as they do. The capital's going to be a little bit gun-shy as well, but anyway. Let, let's, yeah. let's move into copper, because time is, is not our friend yep. at the moment. In copper we trust, there was, an, um, there was a, a conference of the true believers, like a revivalist meeting in Chile of all places, but the price action in London tells quite a different story since. Put it yeah. into context. Well, exactly right. I mean, the, the, And again, we come down to forecasting of numbers, and do we believe the GDP coming out of China, and of course the construction numbers. They're now saying that the smelters are going to, because of weak internal demand in China, you're going to look at exporting and the smelters are going to run red hot trying to export as much as they can to uh, a, a fragile and weak global economy. So that seems to be the picture and some of those construction numbers they're saying can they be believed in China and, and it's not really demonstrating as far as cement and steel. So. Uh, it's just they're a bit dubious and it's not unusual to see that. I mean, do you really trust many of the numbers that mm. come out? Okay, well before we lose you, pick one soft, any soft, to key off this week. What's got the greatest upside potential in light of everything you've seen? Well, I think it's got to be the, the ag sector and I mm. think you've got to look at probably across corn. South Africa is certainly an issue. They've got major droughts over there and soil moisture, so that's going to greatly impact their crops. And mm. I think that you're looking from that hemisphere, you know, the northern hemisphere rolling into summer, I think that the ag sector put it down to corn and possibly a little bit of soy. Okay, panel um, and Pete McGuire in particular, thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you. CEO of XM Group.